his own son but delivered him up for us all uh-huh. how shall we not with him how shall he not with him also freely give us all things uh-huh. who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect mm-hmm. it is God that justifies mm-hmm. who is he that condemns it is the Messiah that died yes rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us who shall, who shall separate us from the love of the Messiah? Uh-huh. Shall tribulation or distress uh-huh. or, or persecution or famine uh-huh. or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all the day long. Uh-huh. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Uh-huh. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Uh-huh. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in the Messiah, our Lord, Yahushua. Watch what you say. I say the truth in the Messiah. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost uh-huh. that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Uh-huh. For I could wish that myself were accursed for the Messiah, for the Messiah from the Messiah for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, mm-hmm. who are Israelites. Who are what? Israelites. He said, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are what? Israelites. Okay. To whom pertains the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. He said, that was all given to the Israelites. He said, all that pertained to the adoption, all that, it was given to the Israelites, right? He said, you know what? I would that I would be accursed, that I was separated from the mother. He just said, that what can separate us from the Most High God, right? Then he came back and he said, listen, I wish I could be separated from the Most High God, right? Pardon me, I, I didn't want to be separated from the Most High God for the, for the sake of my brother. Who's that remind us of? Uh, Yahshua. All right, that's an easy one. Who else? Uh, Joseph. Joseph? Why Joseph? He was separated from his brothers. Separated from his brother, who else? Well, in a messed up way, though. Who else chose, right? Who else chose and asked and they wished, you know what I'm saying? Take me instead of them. Moses. Moses, right? Did Moses, when he had, when he prayed, he said, why don't you block me out of your book? No, no. That's where that city gets me. Him. Well, I blot out my book. I was like, God said, no, I'll take the one who sinned against me. Right? And that's what Paul looking at. That's why Paul, he entertained the thought, but he already knew. He was like, I ain't about to ask God that. Because Moses already did it. Right? He already, Moses already asked him that. He know what the answer was. So Paul was like, look, I, I mean, pardon me. I just, I mean, I just kind of wish that part of me, like, 
You know what I'm saying? I could just be a curse for the sake of my brother. Right? Keep reading. Watch this. Whose are the fathers and of whom as it's concerning the flesh is nine. Oh, it's chapter nine, chapter nine, verse uh five. Oh, it's chapter nine, verse five. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh the Messiah came, who was over all. God blessed forever, amen. Right? Don't let these people tell you it ain't nothing about being an Israelite. He's sitting here and telling. Grab uh Romans chapter three, verse one. These people are sitting here and they tell you, you know what they tell you? It don't matter now. Right? Jesus died, so now it don't matter. You know why they say that? Because they don't want to try to think through, are we Israelites or aren't we Israelites? They don't want to try to think, so they just say it don't matter. If it don't matter, what was, what was Paul just talking about? I'm just trying to figure out what was Paul just talking about. We were talking about the Israelites, according to the flesh, who had the adoption, who the law was given to, Believe in Yahushua himself came through. Right? I'm trying to figure out why was, why he named all that stuff as if it means nothing. Right? This is uh, Romans chapter 3, give me verse 1. What advantage then has the Jew? He said, what advantage then has the Jew? I don't know what he could possibly say next. Or what profit is there in circumcision? He said, what is there any profit in being circumcised? That's our people. Right? We were the ones that got circumcised. He's like, what advantage is it of being a Jew and what advantage is it of being circumcised? I don't know what he can say next. Much in much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. So a man asks, what advantages? I mean, let's, I mean, let's just, you know what I'm saying? TJ is playing basketball, right? It's on the basketball court, right? If somebody asks, what advantages do TJ have above all these other kids? And in the response was, much in every way. What does that mean about TJ? He has an advantage. That means he can watch all these other boys. He's better. I'm telling you, you ask me, I, what advantage do we have? He's better in every way. Much in every way. And then he came back and he said, chiefly. When he said chiefly, you know what he's saying? Mainly. Mostly. Mainly. What did he say? Mainly what? Because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. You know what our biggest advantage is, according to Paul? The word. Right? The, you can see the devil's plan. If you look at the word, you can see the devil's plan. Right? The devil's plan is not, it's not, you know what I'm saying? That thing ain't super complex. It's simple. That's why it works. And that's why people don't get it, because they're looking for something else. They're looking for some, some, some man with a horn. They're looking for, uh, what's the dude? Al Pacino. You know what I'm saying? What was that movie called? The Devil's Advocate. The Devil's Advocate. They looking for Al Pacino to come be, be a lawyer. You know what I'm saying? With a long trench coat on. You know what I'm saying? Like, you looking for the wrong thing. The man just told you our biggest advantage is what? The word. The word. So what you think? What you think he coming after first? Oh, that word don't mean that. That's written by the white man. Out of all the stuff that could be written by a white man, they got books. That are literally written by white men, and these these same people be reading them, right? They read books written by white men. They go right to the library. They ain't smart, you know all these people smart. They go right to the library, pick it up, and it's written by a white man. They know it's a white man. Say it at the bottom. You know what I'm saying? Written by James Arthur, a white man, right? And you look at it, it's like no problem. You know what I'm saying? Anybody got no problem about it? You come to this book, which is not written by a white man, and everybody believe it is. You ain't got no problem reading about this other book that really is written by a white man. Clearly written by a white man. You open up the book, you see his picture in the back, and he's a white man. You know what I'm saying? But it's talking about science, so you good. You know what I'm saying? You trust this book. Albert Einstein, I love it. Right? You're a black chef. I mean, you just black power to death. You know what I'm saying? Albert Einstein, though. Theory of gravity. What was that? Isaac Newton. Relativity. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. No, Isaac Newton, gravity. No, Einstein was relativity. No, I'm talking about Isaac Newton. Well, you said Einstein first, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? You look at the book. You know what I'm saying? I, I trust him. You know what I'm saying? I, roll, I rock with him. Same person to come back to you and to tell you, I don't mess with the Bible. You know why? Written by the white man. So, when, hold on. Let me, let, 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 help me out. When you start reading stuff written by white people, <laughs> that's what I want to know first. And then after you get done answering that question and telling me all them lies, then I want to know, what makes you think this was written by a white man? 
They've made a fool, so now they discredit our word, word. They take the word from us in multiple fronts. Okay, let's say I rock with the Bible. I was raised in a Christian home. Guess how they're going to get me that way? They're going to give me a pastor. They're going to give me a pastor that don't teach it. That twists it. Take what he want out of it. Right? So now on every front, the word is being diluted or it's just being completely removed, which puts us in a position where our advantage is taken away. Now we go from being the top Right? To be in the bottom. And that's exactly how the most high God said it. He said, I'm going to make you the tail and not the head. That's his curse against us. Right? All this stuff is God's plan. Even the devil plan. Right? Everything that play out, that thing got to work out to God's will. What's going to happen that's against God's will? Nothing but us. Because we sin. That's about it. And that thing still going to work out to be his will. Right? That's how we got to look at this, though. Let's go back to Exodus. This is Exodus chapter 36. We left off. We finished uh, Exodus chapter 35. Now we're going to pick up Exodus chapter 36. Remember last week, we talked a little bit about, uh, uh, about you know what I'm saying, the, the, the tabernacle starting to be built and a lot of the artifacts that's going to work with the tabernacle. Um, and we talked about how the tabernacle was a shadow of things to come. Talked a little bit about the feast days. Talked a little bit about the uh, Sabbath and all some of the other things. And, and how the shadow, as opposed to being considered something that's less less worthy or less uh, valuable and being called a shadow, we look at the shadow as something that reminds us of the value of what is to come, right? It is something of value, right? And we, and we prove that out by talking about how there are certain pieces of the, the tabernacle, certain pieces, the certain artifacts, and the Most High God said, if you touch it, you will die. Right? So if we looked at it and we said, the Most High God take the shadow that seriously, why wouldn't we take the shadow that seriously when, when we told this in the New Testament? The New Testament say that the Sabbath is a shadow. Why we look at that like, well, that don't mean nothing then. Right? So we have to re, we have to recalibrate how we think about things we, as we relearn the book. You know what I'm saying? We actually learn the book and, 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 and get traditions out of the way. This is Exodus chapter 36, verse 1. Then wrought Bezaleel and Aholiab and every wise-hearted man in whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary according to all that the Lord had commanded. Excuse me. And Moses called Bezaleel and Aholiab and every wise-hearted man in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom and every one whose heart stirred him up to come unto the work to do it, and they received of Moses all the offering all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it withal. Right? So notice what happened. Notice what's saying. It's important. They received what from who? The offerings from Moses. So Moses, so the people had to bring the, the offering to Moses. Moses had it. Right? And Moses is the one handing it out to the people that's going to do the work. Right? So it started with Moses. Right? Everything get brought to Moses. I, I'm going to hand it out from there. Watch this. Keep going. And they received of Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it withal. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. Mm -hmm. And all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work which they made mm -hmm. and they spake unto Moses saying the people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which they the said, Lord commanded to make they said it's too much right the people brought too much right remember if we read Exodus 12 remember Exodus 12 how they got this stuff the book said they spoiled the Egyptians and how did they spoil them by stealing from them no they spoiled them just by asking the Bible said it, it said borrow Right? And it said borrow and lend. But we know if we look at the Hebrew words for that, it doesn't actually mean borrow or lend. It just means request, right? It was an inquiry. So they asked him for stuff. They just said, hey, can I have that? Right? I got to get up out of here. Can I have that? And you remember, all these plagues hit the, hit the Egyptians. It ended off with uh, the firstborn of every single house in the Egyptian land, other than the Hebrews, the firstborn being taken and killed. Do you imagine you get a series of plagues ending off with your baby or your oldest son 
being killed, then you look at that and you say, y'all just get up out of here. Because I know why it's happening. I know it's because y'all here. Right? This stuff keep happening because Pharaoh won't let y'all go. So then after a while, you just like, man, take whatever you want. Get out of here. I just lost my baby. Right? I just lost my, my oldest boy. You know what I'm saying? Just, just take them. Go. Whatever you want. Take it. Go. Take the gold. Take the thread. Take whatever you need and get up out of here. Right? And so that's what we that's what we have to look at and we have to try to understand. That's what the people were dealing with. Right? And now, they, now that's how they get all these materials. They take all the materials. They give it to Moses. Now Moses start to hand this stuff out. Keep going. And Moses gave commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing, for the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it, and too much. Mm -hmm. And every wise-hearted man among them that wrought the work of the tabernacle made ten curtains of fine twined linen, in blue and purple and scarlet, with cherubims of cunning work made he them. All right? So this is where it starts to describe everything that was made. All right? So we kind of talked about it. We had passed the pictures around and everything. So this is when it's actually being made. Before, it talked about kind of how, you know, the scheme of it and how it should look and all that. He describing it to the people. But this is where it is, where it actually starts to be described as it's being put together. All right? We're going to skip on over to, uh, it, it's going to do that for a couple chapters. You know, so I encourage you all to read it. Um, we're going to skip over to uh, Exodus chapter 40. This is Exodus chapter 40. Give me verse 16. Exodus chapter 40, verse 16. Thus did Moses according to all that the Lord commanded him, so did he. And it came to pass in the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month. So this is the first month on the second year, in the second day of the month, right? So if you guys remember, we came to Mount Sinai, I think it was the third month in the first year, right? So first year... Third month. We had three months in. We came out. It took us three months to get to Mount, Mount Sinai. Right? Now, we know from the time that Moses went up 40 days, 40 nights, and he went up another 40 days, 40 nights. Right? We look at that. That's almost three months by itself. Right? So, you can imagine we have, we have about six months in. Right? Then, after that, you know what I'm saying, we started to build all this stuff. Right? Then that brings us all the way to the first month of the second year. So, that's another six months. Right? So it's a process over a year that we've been reading. Alright? It's a year's process. Keep reading. That the tabernacle was reared up. And Moses reared up the tabernacle and fastened its sockets and set up the boards thereof and put in the bars thereof and right? reared so notice, up its pillars. Notice. The people put all this stuff together. Made it. Right? Who made it? Who, who put the whole thing together though? Moses. Right? The people made all the little pieces and made the sockets. You know how you, uh, you know how you, uh, you, you know what I'm saying? You buy your kid a, a toy or something and they put it in the box. You know what I'm saying? They say on the box, assembly is required. You know what I'm saying? They like, hey, we'll make the pieces, but we ain't putting the thing together for you. Right? You gotta get that thing home and put it together. Well, that's how it was. They had all the pieces together and then they gave it to Moses. And Moses is the one responsible for putting all the pieces together and all that. And we'll learn why in Leviticus when we start to read Leviticus. Alright, keep going. And he spread abroad the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent above it, above upon it, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he took and put the testimony into the ark and the staves on the ark and put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle and set up the veil of the covering and covered the ark of the testimony, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he put the table in the tent of the congregation upon the side of the tabernacle northward, without the veil. And he set the bread in order upon it before the Lord, as the Lord had commanded Moses. 
and he put the candlestick in the tent of the congregation over against the table on the side of the uh, on the side of the tabernacle southward. You see Moses just setting everything up, all right? And he lighted the lamps before the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he put the golden altar in the tent of the congregation before the veil. And he burnt sweet incense thereon, and the Lord commanded Mo as the Lord commanded Moses. And he set up the hanging at the door of the tabernacle. And he put the altar of burnt offering by the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation, and offered upon it the burnt offerings and the meat offerings. And the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he set the laver between the tent of the congregation and the altar, and put water there, so to wash withal. And Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet thereat. Mm -hmm. When they went into the tent of the congregation and when they came near unto the altar, they washed as the Lord commanded Moses. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging on the court gate. So Moses finished the work. He did what? Finished the work. So who started? Moses. Who finished it? Moses. Doxy. All right? He had to put all that stuff together, and then he had to, at the end of it, book tell you very clearly. He finished the work. Grab Hebrews chapter 2 for me. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. It's Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. You know what I'm saying? Moses get to it. He's like, man, everybody stand back. Y'all did a good job. You know, everybody stand back. Let me go ahead and rear up. You see, it notice it started off with him. He said, Moses reared up the tabernacle. All right? And at the very end, he said, he finished the work. He set it up and finished it off. It's Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, uh -huh. lest at any time we should let them slip. Uh -huh. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, mm -hmm. how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Uh -huh. Which what? Which at the first began to be spoken. At the first? At the first began to be spoken by the Lord as was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. Right? We look at it, he said, at the first it began with the Lord. He's talking about the Messiah. He said, at the first, it started with the Messiah. This word that we hear, guess who it started with? The Messiah. Right? You think it's it? Who it's going to finish with? The Messiah. Y'all fit on me. That's right. Grab uh, Revelation chapter 22. Let's grab that. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 10. And he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Mm -hmm. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He said, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. Let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. Mm -hmm. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. In other words, wherever you at, I'm locking your buddy in just like that. That's how you got to set up. That's why he told you, you got to be righteous when you come back. That way you can be locked in with righteousness. Wherever you at, it ain't gonna be no change, no, no chance to change. You can't be like, all right, give me, all right, give me another five minutes. We read the parable of the, uh, the, the ten virgins. You know what I'm saying? Some of them used out the oil. They, they're responsible. They didn't bring the oil for their lamp. The other ones, they had the oil for their lamp. They stuff was burning. They was ready. The other ones, like, man, let me get a little bit of the oil. They're like, listen, we mess around give you some of our oil. We ain't gonna have enough. They went on to see the bridegroom. The rest of them, the bridegroom was like, man, I don't even know y'all. He said, I never knew y'all. Right? Because they got locked in where they are. You was, you was waiting. You was sleeping. You, was, you, wasn't, you, wasn't, you wasn't paying attention to all this stuff. Guess what? That thing done. Right? That thing done. He said he gonna come in the middle of the night. Didn't he? Mm -hmm. What we gonna do? Gotta be ready at all times. Right? Keep going. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Mm -hmm. 
Blessed are they that do his commandments, and that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter into in through the gates into the city. I said, all right, he said, I'm Alpha and Omega, the first and the beginning. Right? I mean, the first and the beginning, <laughs> the beginning and the last. All right? We look at it. Right? This is this is the Most High God. Right? Look at uh. Isaiah chapter 44. It's Isaiah chapter 44, Yet now, hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Mm -hmm. Thus says the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. Mm -hmm. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. Mm -hmm. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thine offering. Mm -hmm. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. Watch what he said. He said, I'm going to pour my blessings out on them. Right? And after I pour my blessings out on them, he said, they're going to spring up. I wonder what he's talking about. Watch what he said that. One shall say, I am the Lord's. He said, he said, one of them going to say, I am the Lord's. I'm Yah's. Right? And what's the next one going to say? And another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. And another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord and surname himself by the name of Israel. What's a surname? Nickname. That's a last name. Right? That's an additional name. Right? What do you got the what do you got the Hebrew like running around saying? Yahuda bin Israel Ahala Malahatusala. Ahimelech. They call themselves by the name of Jacob. <laughs> yeah. Alright? They call themselves by the name of Jacob. They surnaming themselves Israel. Alright? The most high God said this is going to happen. He said, I'm going to pour out these blessings. What do you think is happening? People starting to get this information. They taking the most high God blessing in some cases and they going the wrong direction with it. Nevertheless, the most high God pouring this stuff out and people starting to get the information. Then they run and they, and they doing this. Right? He said it would happen. Ben Israel, Yehudi Ben Israel. Alright? One part that we still waiting to see, he said they're going to ascribe with their hand. You know what that means? I mean, they're going to write. Alright? So that's what we're waiting to see. Alright? We're going to see a lot of our brothers when, they, when the thing get real. There's going to be some writers out there that's going to write according to the Most High God. Alright? Keep going. Watch this. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. Watch it. I am the first and he I am I'm the what? I am the first and I am the last. He said, I'm the first and I'm the last. That sounds a lot what we just wrote. We want to make sure we got it right. He said, I'm the first and I'm the last. What else? And besides me, there is no God. He said, and besides me, there is no God. What we read in Revelation, that was Yahweh Shua talking. What we read right here, that's Yah talking. Right? So you look at it and be like, well, he the first. He the last. The other one, the Alpha and the Omega, and he the first and he the last. How that thing add up? Right? He just said, he just told you right here. Yah, he just told you very clearly, and there's no other God. Right? Ain't that what you said? Read that thing you did for me? I am, I am the first and I am the last, and besides me, there is no God. Alright? Grab, uh, grab, uh, John chapter 10 for me. A lot of people get confused. Right? A lot of our Hebrew brothers, you know what I'm saying? They, they run around, they get confused. You know what they start telling us? They start telling us. Matter of fact, before we grab John 10, give me uh, Colossians. Give me Colossians chapter 1. They start telling us, you know what I'm saying? You know, well, you can't trust Paul. I'm going to show you why they tell you you can't trust Paul. Here's Colossians chapter 1. Give me verse 12. I'm about to show 
you why they say you can't trust Paul. Giving thanks unto the Father which had made us. It's Paul talking right now. He said, giving thanks unto the Father which had made us. Made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Mm -hmm. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Uh -huh. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Mm -hmm. Who is the image of the invisible God, the Who firstborn the of every image creature. image of the invisible God, the first. Here goes that first again. He's the first. And then what else? Firstborn of every creature. Uh-huh. For by him were all things created. He that said, are in by heaven. him were all things created. So who created all things? Yeah, oh, sure. He said, by him were all things created. And then what else? That are in heaven and that were in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power. Uh -huh. All things were created by him and for him. So, you know, they look at that, they're going to say, you know what? You can't rock with Paul. See, Paul, Paul was just a man. That's what they're going to tell you. Paul was just a man. You know what I'm saying? Paul was, he can make errors and mistakes just like you and me. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't really an apostle guy. He just kind of threw himself out there and wrote a lot. You know what I'm saying? So, some of his stuff be off. You know what I'm saying? We can't follow Paul. You know what we got to follow? The law. You know what I'm saying? What Paul say don't line up with the law, then that thing don't make sense. That's what they're going to tell you. Right? The law and the prophets. Right? Then they're going to come back and they're going to be like, see, the Messiah never called himself God. That's what they're going to tell you. That's when you got to take them. Go ahead and go to John chapter 10. That's what they're going to try to tell you. The Messiah never called himself God. He would have never did that. You know what I'm saying? You got to go see Paul just kind of jumped out there, did his own thing. So you can't trust Paul. Like, yeah, okay. That's why our Hebrew brother can go wrong. But did he say the team of God are one? Huh? Did he say they are one? Yeah, buddy. That's what we're about to get right now. This is John chapter 10. Yahshua answered unto them, I told you and you believe me not. The uh -huh. works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Mm -hmm. But ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep as I said unto you. Mm -hmm. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Mm -hmm. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Mm -hmm. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. He said, my Father who gave them to me, man, he greater than everybody. And nobody can pluck them out of my hand. We cool with that, right? Why should we say that? I and my father are one. I got that. So what did he just, I mean, let's break it down. What did he really just say? He said, my father, he greater than anybody. And can't nobody pluck them out of my father's head. Oh, and let me uh, add him something else. Me and my father are saying. So in other words, he said, I'm greater than everybody. And nobody going to take these boys up out of my hand. Right? I mean, let's see. I mean, let's see what the reaction was. Cause we got our Hebrew brother be like, man, he ain't never called himself God. Let's see what the reaction of that was. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. And Yahshua answered them, "Many good works have I shown you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me?" Yeah, he said, Yahshua came up like, man, look at all these miracles I did. Why y'all stoning me for some miracles? Our people wasn't crazy. We knew what we why we why we was about to stone. Him. The Jews answered him, saying, "For a good work we stoned thee not." But for blasphemy, and because that you, being a man, made yourself God. Now what? Now you telling me that he didn't call himself God? They didn't call himself God. We look. I mean, he said, "I and my Father are one." Immediately, we said, oh, "Okay, <laughs> yeah, all right, yeah, all right." So we understand what we dealing with right here. Go ahead, pick up snow. Let's get him, boy. I mean, cause we Hebrews, we don't play that stuff. You're not about to come in here. We got one God. The Most High God, first commandment he gave us. The Lord your God is one. Yahuwah your God is one. First commandment, right? First thing he told us, Yahuwah, that's law. He told us, Yahuwah your God is one, right? Then he told us, if anybody come around here teaching you anything different, you get they butt. That's our law, right? Our law teaches us that. So Yahweh will bring his black butt around here. And he gets to talking, listen, my father and me, we won. Immediately, first thing we're going to do, we stone your black butt. 
You come around here talking that craziness, we stone you. Because we didn't understand what he was saying. We didn't understand who the man was. Right? We didn't understand how that thing played out. And we didn't take the time to listen. So our immediate reaction is, you making yourself die. And that's why they reacted that way. Because that's what he's doing. Right? The Hebrew brother today, they try to act like, well, no, that's not what he was saying. I don't know any other way you could take it. If a man said it today, you would look at it that way. So why you ain't looking at it that way when he said it? That's what he said. He said, me and the most I got is one. What you going to do about it? You got a stone. Or you got to believe it's true. He's he going to put you in a tight position. You either going to believe he is sinner for lying, right? Or you got to believe it's the truth. It ain't no other way around. You can't beat around the bush. Which one? Choose one. That's why the man tells you, I would that you are hot or cold. But since you warm, I'm going to spit your butt out. You got to choose the darn side. Which one? You know what I'm saying? Is he sinning or is the man the most high God? Right? It's either, if he ain't the most high God, it's blasphemy. Period. It ain't no other way to put it. You can't say that you one with God and you not him. So you know how it, it, the, a lot of our Hebrew brothers resolve that problem, right? Oh, Y'all sure ain't the Messiah. You got, that's the road that it got to take you down. Logically, you have to do it. You got to say, first of all, if I don't want to accept it as it's truly written, guess what I got to do? I got to throw away Paul. Right? But then if you think about it, well, Peter vouches for Paul. Right? If we were to read third, uh, uh, first Peter chapter, I mean, uh, second Peter chapter three, I think, you know what I'm saying? If we were to read it, he going to vouch for Paul. He's going to be like, man, listen, a lot of people don't understand what Paul be talking about. Right? So he's bound for Paul. He tell you, Paul the man. And Peter walked with y'all sure the whole time. So that means if you get rid of Paul, guess who you got to get rid of also? You got to get rid of Peter. But now if you get rid of Peter, because he walked with the man the whole time, now guess who you got to get rid of? Yahushua. Sure. You got to get rid of y'all sure. So at the end of the day, now you end up with Hebrew Israelites that are called non-Messianic. In other words, they don't believe it at the New Testament at all. They don't believe that uh, Yahweh Shua is the Messiah. They still waiting on that Messiah. Right? right? You know why that's crazy? Grab Daniel from me. You got Amos 8, that's who in Israel right now? Who? Well, the fake Jews yeah. believe that too. Like yeah, they non messianic too, yeah. a lot of them. Some yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the fake ones, they non messianic A lot of them non messianic That's where they get this stuff from. That's where our people, they that where we were where we went wrong, we we came to our knowledge and then we went straight to these Jewish people. Try to teach us so about like, our stuff. Like, why would you go to a fake Jew to learn about how to be a real Jew? Like, yeah. We, we kind of took it like, oh, they must have something right. Because, uh, Same thing. So I go from learning from a Christian, getting lied to, and then I was learning from these Jewish people and getting lied to. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of them, they, they deny it. And they say they put their own little twist on what the Jewish people thought of. Be like, no, no, they ain't. You know what I'm saying? We don't believe what they believe. No, y'all still, y'all still doing the same thing. Because even after the Pharisees didn't believe, so, they, so the Pharisees, what they was, believe was passed kind of down. Somewhat. Even after, but not what even what Yahshua died, some of them still was yeah. like, nah, that Yahshua was a savior and they passed. Yeah, passed some pass of it down. But what these people got is not necessarily passed down from the Pharisees. They fake. They ain't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? Our people got disconnected from our people. So yeah. it ain't nothing that got passed down to us. And then the the Jewish people, they they didn't you know what I'm saying, they didn't real really have no connection, you know what I'm saying, with our people. So you know what I'm saying? They, they just kind of read the writings of the Pharisees and read the writings of our people and then kind of adopt some ideas and mix it in with their traditions and all that. So that's how we get to the, the foolishness that they teach today. This is the, I don't know what verse I'm on. It's Daniel chapter 9, maybe verse 25. That's a nice job. <laughs> Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall hold be on, seven hold on, weeks. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is giving you time period. That was 25? Mm -hmm. He said, from the going forth of the commandment to do what? To restore and to rebuild Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks. So this is a time period. He, he giving you a time mark. He said, from the time that a commandment goes out, to restore the temple, right? Until the Messiah comes. So this is a prophecy talking about a Messiah. 
Remember, the Hebrew Israelite, they got to throw out Paul, which means they got to throw out Peter, which means they got to throw out the Messiah. Right? So, hey, look, Yahushua is not the Messiah. He was a great man, but he wasn't the Messiah. He wasn't what the promise, what the Bible promised. But this is telling you something going to happen when the Messiah comes. Right? So, let's hear about what's supposed to happen. It shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. Uh -huh. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Uh -huh. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. Uh -huh. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with the flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined. So here's the problem that we got. Timeline is going to tell us there's going to be a commandment to rebuild the temple. Right? A time is going to pass by. Some weeks going to pass by. Right? Then the Messiah is going to come next. Temple going to be rebuilt. Messiah is going to come. Right? So that's the order. Right? Then after the Messiah comes, then the Messiah is going to be cut off. Not for itself though. Right? And then after the Messiah is cut off, guess what? The last thing going to happen. The temple going to be destroyed. Is that not what we just read? Let's read it one more time to make sure I ain't making enough nothing. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, okay, shall be so seven is, weeks. There's a commandment to rebuild the temple, and then there's the Messiah. Okay, what else? And three score and two weeks, and the street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. Uh huh. And after three score and two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off. Okay. So there was a command to rebuild the temple, the Messiah. Now the Messiah is cut off. What's next? But not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with the flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. So then, at the very end, the temple is destroyed. So guess what we can track for sure. Right? Let's just say we don't know the Messiah is the Messiah. We don't know that Yahweh Shua is the Messiah. Guess what we can for sure say? There was for sure a commandment that went out to rebuild the temple. That happened. That's history. We know that that happened for sure. Right? And guess what else happened for sure? There was for sure a destruction of the sanctuary. You know, the wall was built in troublous times right after the commandment. wall was definitely built in troublous times. Right? All those things is fact. So we know in between those two things, according to the scripture, Messiah had to come. So now guess what you got to get rid of if you are honest Hebrew Israelite? You got to get rid of the Old Testament too. Because that's not right. If, if Yahushua ain't the Messiah, right, and you can't point to anybody else who is the Messiah that came in that time period, then you, will, if you're honest, you're going to have to say Daniel was wrong. They ain't going to go that far. Though. They don't want to deal with that so it put, this is how the Most High God work. He'll put your butt in a box. Where all you got to do is be honest. You can be wrong about something, but just be honest. Right? It's cool to be like, mm, I don't trust, I don't trust Paul. Right? So because of that, if I don't trust Paul, it makes sense. I got to get rid of Peter. That makes sense. Right? And if I get rid of Peter, guess what? I got to get rid of the Messiah. Right? Okay. The Messiah is not Yahushua. Now, back to the drawing board. Who is the Messiah now? Maybe we still wait. Then you read your book, and he's like, Daniel, oh, but Daniel said, temple going to be rebuilt, Messiah going to come, Messiah going to get cut off, then temple destroyed. I know the temple was destroyed, so that means, guess what? The Messiah would have had to come before. So now all the, all the Hebrew Israelites need to do now is figure out who else came in that time period that meet the criteria of the Messiah. When you let me know, I'll rock with it. Until then, guess who I got? The Messiah. These people, you can't let these people make a fool out of you. They just come up with anything. They don't know no darn book. They don't know the law. They don't know the prophet. They don't know none of this stuff. They just roll with it and they go with whatever punch they can. How you gonna have a Messiah when Daniel? You gotta tell Daniel. You tell me Daniel lying, and, and now I call you honest. <laughs> I'm fine with you. I don't, I'm fine with you. I'm fine with you making a mistake. But you just gotta be honest about your mistake. Because if you're honest about the mistakes that you make, it'll lead you to the truth. It's only when you sitting there playing a hypocrite, be like, nah, it ain't that, and pretending like you don't see nothing, that's when your butt gets stuck. We gotta lead each other back to the darn truth. This is Isaiah chapter 48. Let's go ahead and shoot through this. It's Isaiah chapter 48. So 
are the side of the Sarah told you. The Father and I are one. That's solid. I know you don't like it, but that's it. The book already told you the image of the Most High God. So now when you look at it, now you take your work your way forward. I know, I know we just fought a little bit about who the Messiah is, but I think it's proven. We know who the Messiah is. He would have had to come before the temple was destroyed. And there was only one man that fit the criteria before the temp temple was destroyed. Right? So now we know who the Messiah is. Let's listen to what the man said. He said the Father and him are one. Right? So if that's valid, then we have to go back to Paul. When Paul said he's the image of the Most High God and all things were made by him, that means that was true. So maybe we should get Paul. Maybe Paul is trustworthy. Right? Let's see if it lined up with the law. This is, uh, I mean, uh, with, the, with the prophets. This is Isaiah chapter 48, verse 9. For my name's sake will I defer my anger, and for my praise will I refrain for thee, that I cut thee not off. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. For my own sake, even for my own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? He said, how should my name be polluted? Watch this. And I will not give my glory to another. He said, I'm not giving my glory to another. Give me chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. He said, I'm not giving my glory to another. The man just said, Father and I are one. That's why they're about to stone him. It's like you're taking the glory of the most high God. We know our, look, back then we knew our book. We knew it well enough to be like, that don't sound right. You calling yourself God. It's just for us, we are looking at there's no way this man could be God. We didn't really take the time to try to pay attention to what he is saying. To find out, oh, this is the Messiah. We never looked at the scripture and be like, oh, the Messiah is really the Most High God. We didn't really pay attention to the prophet that said, Emmanuel, that he would come in the flesh. Right? It's a lot of things that the book we've been trying to tell us. We didn't really catch him. We didn't catch the prophecy. So when the man came in the flesh, we were like, no, that don't make no sense. The whole time the book was telling him that, that makes sense. Right? But we weren't ready for it. So the only thing you can do is you can say, okay. If you are a man and you call yourself God, I got to stone you. That's the honest thing to do when you don't understand. Right? It's too many of us trying to play both sides of the fence. If you stick to what you really believe and let you, if honest about your lie, you will be led to the truth. And then it's up to you to change or whatever, but you'll be led. You'll find out. Just like Paul. Paul wasn't playing that mess. Paul was out there killing, trying to stone, taking, taking these... Uh, Taking these disciples, you know what I'm saying? Taking them in. He tried to, he look, look, put their butt in jail. Paul wasn't playing with these people. But by being honest about his mistakes, he looked at it and he was like, oh, I messed up. He didn't try to play his great. No, I was right. No, that was not. He just, when he said, it led him to the truth by doing the wrong. Doing wrong, thinking that you were right, will lead you to the truth. But you have to be honest when you find out that you're wrong. You can't sit here and be like, no, I'm, I'm still right. That's where people mess up. You know what I'm saying? Most like God ain't expecting all of us to go our whole life without making a mistake. He laid his son down for the fact that he know that people are going to make a mistake. We need a way out. Now, who's willing to change? Or who's going to be full of pride and be like, you know what? Nah, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I mean, nah, that wasn't really a mistake. You just read it wrong. Yeah, okay. This is uh, chapter 42. Give me verse 6. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 6. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the, a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Right? He said, I'm not sharing my glory to anybody else. Right? So that puts you in a tight spot. Either Yahushua is a sinner who's trying to take the glory of the Most High God, or Yah and Yahushua are one like the man said. It makes sense if you say they one. Right? If you say they want, it makes sense. Right? Then all the way back to the beginning of the book, when they say, let us make them in our image, all that makes sense. Right? And with John chapter 1, verse 1, 
You know what I'm saying? When it show up, when it start off, it say, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. I mean, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That makes sense now. All of it starts to line up. Let's go ahead and end off with John chapter 5. It's John chapter 5, verse uh, 22. It's John chapter 5, verse 22. Y'all watch it in. Y'all let me make sure y'all tell these Hebrews. You know what I'm saying? Y'all listening in too. You know what I'm saying? We got a podcast now. You know what I'm saying? So y'all listen. Anybody who's watching or listening in, you make sure you tell these Hebrews of You know what I'm saying? Show them how. Show them how if, if y'all sure ain't the Messiah, just ask them to show you how the Messiah came, whoever they say the Messiah is, how he came, clearly didn't accomplish anything. You know what I'm saying? And how he's still around today, or what? Just tell them to give you the story and how the Messiah came according to Daniel's prophecy. If they can't prove that thing out, go ahead, and, go ahead and let them know you good. You all right? You know what I'm saying? We got the truth for you. You just need to go ahead and submit to it. A lot of these people ain't gonna submit to it. They gonna they gonna jug and jive and dance around it and all that. Cause they they got too much pride to admit that they wrong. Right? It stopped being about it stopped being about finding the truth and it started just being about. Who came up with it first? Who said it first? Who can save face in the argument? We ain't got time for that. I said, ah, man, listen. It's a, it's, a, it's a cheap price for me to look stupid in front of everybody, but to have my life at the end of this thing. I mean, that's a, I mean, that's, that's a clearance deal for me. We good. I look crazy in front of all y'all, but guess what? At the very end of the thing, bet you I'm going to have some life. This is John chapter 5, verse 22. For the Father judges no man, but has committed all judgment unto the Son. That all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. They're going to honor the Son even as who? They honor the Father. So, this is where they're going to be tired. You know, they're going to say, you shouldn't pray to Yahushua. You know what I'm saying? You pray to God. Yahushua is just a man. Okay. So, the man just said, honor the Son just how you honor who? The Father. I got that. Because they want. Alright? You, you don't honor the son. What what that mean? You don't honor the father. You done. That's why when we start off, we say all honor goes to the father through who? The son. Period. How you going to honor the father if you don't honor the son? He just told you if you honor the father, you got to honor the son. Period. Even as you honor the father, you got to honor the son. How else you going to get to it? That's book for us. All right? You ask these people. Show me who the Messiah is. Alright? And no I don't I don't nobody I don't want to hear that great man stuff either. How he a great man and he a sinner. If he if he just a man and he's not God, the man is a sinner, and why you call him great? According to our book, if he a man, listen, let's just be fair. According to our book, our law, and that's what these Hebrew Israelites like. According to our law, if the man is just a man and he called himself God, he said he got the we honor him just like we honor the father. Oh, that's stone work. Your blood should be stone. Period. Right? That's blasphemy. You you and the father are one? Okay. Yeah, we got to stone your butt. Because he's just a man. I don't want to hear that he's just a man. Right? If he's just a man, that man should be stoned. And he ain't great. Don't be calling him great if he's just a man. But now, if he tell the truth, stuff starts to make sense. Right? Because if he's just a man, you got to tell me, where's the Messiah? Why did Daniel lie to us? Why did God call him his prophet? You gotta throw out Daniel. Once you throw out Daniel, you gotta throw out the Old Testament. You gotta throw out Moses. Now you left with nothing. Now you're an atheist. I'm fine with that. Go do it. Just be honest and take it all away. You know what I'm saying? Because at one point you start to chip away at the Bible. A lot of people just like, oh no, I don't want that. I want when you start to chip away at the Bible, you gotta get rid of it all. Right? If you're honest, if you're honest, you gotta get rid of it all. You know what I'm saying? You do that, I'm good. You be an atheist, you be all right. Or you go be a Muslim, I get it. You know what I'm saying? That's more honest to me. I get it. You know what I'm saying? But if you ain't going to do that, then uh, your butt got a problem. All right? Any questions? Let's pray out. Hmm.